The truth is that mountain biking is actually really important. And for some of you, it's your connection to mental health. For me, it was what kept me going when I lost someone very important. Now, I'll tell that story another time, but the truth of the matter is that mountain biking is harder than we are good at it. And right now there's 40 million mountain bikers just in the United States alone. So we're on a mission to help 10,000 riders shred with confidence. And if that's you, if you want to be on this journey with us, subscribe to the channel and come be a radical rider with Mountain Bike Academy. We're going to have a lot of fun. Tune into this lesson because it'll help you with cornering. And I wanted to share with you, this is actually me with my co-founder, John Lindsay. We created this video specifically to help you put the core in cornering. Let's go. Thanks. All right, let's hit it. What's up, everybody? This is David here with my brother-in-law and co-founder, John Lindsay. Good to have you on today. And today we're going to talk about putting the core in cornering. And last episode I did, what we did is we, we did an episode on how the torso has to do one thing and it has to track through the trail and the lower body has to do three things and they have to do it independently. So um, rather than me talking for a bunch about this stuff, uh, John has a master's degree and a bachelor's degree and a life's work behind him of fitness, of movement. And I'm gonna kind of talk about this with him today. So get out some notes, get ready to learn a lot and get ready to apply this to your corner. So yeah, say hi, John. Yeah, it's psyched to be on, psyched to uh, dive into the core and uh, learn from you more about cornering as well. So uh, yeah, let's get it going. Let's get it going. Well, cool. And by the way, what I'm going to do is we're going to talk. And if I have to give an example, I'm going to put the video in later for you all to see. So I'll point to the wrong part of the screen and it won't show up there. It'll show up somewhere else. So uh, the first thing that everyone asks me about cornering is um, how do I, the number one challenge that I hear intermediate riders run into is how do I get the bike to go around the turn easily without feeling like it wants to stand up or go straight? And so like the common symptom, this I was talking about with you on the messenger chat before, the common symptom that I've noticed is that people have to lock their body to copy the skeleton position that they learned in a clinic, which is a correct thing. And the, the effect of that is they end up, um, if you remember me talking about this with you, is they end up kind of locking the body and they can't move dynamically. So... You know, what's been your experience with working with, with athletes over time, just if they have a weak or an untrained core or a core that doesn't activate when they're, when they're doing sport, like, what does that look like? What does it feel like? Just kind of give it to us. Well, well part of what you're, you're saying is it's certainly having nice core strength because nice core strength is going to allow you to do your upper body and lower body to interact well. Um, it, because when you're cornering or really doing anything on the bike, there is this subtle interaction, sometimes not so subtle, of transferring force from lower body to upper body and doing that in a fluid way where you can not just be efficient on the bike, but you can also make turns and tight corners um, in a fluid movement. So you're more efficient, you're using less energy, uh, and you're going to finish that, that, that course faster. But I'll back up for a second and say, you know, to be able to get into some of these positions, you need to have the appropriate mobility first. So something like cornering, a lot of the joints are involved. Uh, you could probably say all the major joints, ankle all the way up to wrist, going into the hands. And if you're lacking serious mobility in one of those bigger joints, that's probably going to be a red flag that you're going to need to work on. Um, and when it comes to the core, if you haven't done you know, if you haven't put an emphasis on training the core, let's say you do have this nice mobility or at least okay enough mobility to get into these positions, um, you know, you're going to get tight probably in the upper body and in the lower body too. You're going to just tense everything up. You're going to stop pedaling and you're just going to make this rigid upper body and lower body and do the movements. Um, if you have a nice core, you've got that core turned on 75%, something like that. Uh, you're not going to have to use the upper body as much. You're not going to have to use the lower body as much. The entire body is just going to be used nice and efficiently. And I don't want to say you're going to be kind of a Gumby whipping around that turn, but you're going to be, you know, the, I think the word fluid is the best word to use here. Is yeah. The body is going to be fluid and all the joints are going to move 
move in the position they need to move. You're not going to be overly tight. You're going to be able to do that nice and smoothly. Um, so it requires definitely solid core strength, but also good mobility head to toe as well to be able to get there in those positions efficiently. Yeah. When when I talk with riders who are looking to corner better and I watch them, because um, we've been working together for years now, it's like I kind of pick up on a few things. You said something important about mobility and you know, a lot of a lot of riders they think, okay, I gotta work on my core, I've got to work on my mobility. So they'll go stretch. Everyone knows how to stretch. And they'll do like sit-ups and maybe planks that are really good. And I would say that very, you know, like I'm, we're not here to make anyone feel bad. It's good on you for getting out there and doing that. But if you're just doing planks and sit-ups, what might someone be missing that those things maybe don't do? You? If if you sit at a desk six, seven hours a day and you just do sit-ups, planks, and and like some stretching. Well, I think I think planks can be okay, which I'll get to. I think sit-ups, what. You know, a lot of times in strength and conditioning, people say you don't need to train your core if you've got a good full body program, because if you're doing things like weighted squats, pull ups, push ups, uh, deadlifts, your core is subtly involved to some extent during your entire workout. But, you know, biking is not a natural human movement. Uh, biking you know, especially if you're biking for an extended period of time, you're going out on a 90 minute, two hour ride where it's bumpy as hell. That's not something the human body is necessarily supposed to do. So the stronger your core can be, the better it's gonna, not just have you give you a better ride, it's gonna protect the spine, it's gonna protect the hips, um, all that stuff. So um, I think adding things in that are, that are full body exercises, but rather the emphasis being on the lower body or the upper body, the emphasis is on the core. So sit-ups, um, maybe you could argue your upper body's involved a little bit, but it's pretty turned off. It's really just hammering the, uh, the abdominal muscles hardcore. Planks, on the other hand, you know, they do tie in definitely the upper body. I like a high plank. I don't like being on the elbows. I like being on the hands. I think that's a little more representative of the stuff you do on the bike. Um, but for most people, just holding that position is pretty easy. Uh, so if you can take the high plank position and add things, I'm sure most people are familiar with a mountain climber, very quick drill, slow that way down um, and be intentional with it where you're holding a high plank, you're pulling a knee into your elbow, maybe pausing for a second, really squeezing the abs tight slowly putting the leg back, doing the other side. Moving that one limb is going to get you, your body's going to want to rotate in one direction. So you're resisting these rotational forces, which is what you're doing really subtly and not so subtly the entire time you're biking. Um, so I do like planks, but I think get off your elbows, get on your hands, and add a little bit of dynamicness to it to help add in that uh, resisting of rotational force. Um, and it's gonna it's gonna gel with stuff on the bike better. Um, nothing wrong with sit-ups, but there's just so many better things out there that are gonna lead to better biking. Yeah, and I'll edit this in later. What you said right there, I'll come back to the part where you said it's not mountain biking's not natural. No, dude, it's the most natural thing you can do. I'm kidding. <laughs> so, but no, I'm just it doesn't mean it's it. not fun. It's just not. I'm not playing with it. But no, it's, I understand what you mean. So it's the, the thing that you brought up about, hey, if you're shredding on the edge of your ability, that means that you're, you are challenging your body uh, to resist forces. And something that I put into some of the training we do is just flat out physics. It's like Newton's first, second, and third law. And one of the things is that for every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. And this would be a really good point for me to edit in. I'll do it in a second. Let me point to the wrong spot. It's not here on the screen. So I'm going to put in the video of me doing this wall ride that we built, uh, me and my friends did. I remember this specific take. I was completely wound up. In other words, I was I was twisting my body down towards the ground. And the bike, all it wanted to do was ride off the top of the wall ride. And I just remember feeling like there is no more tension that could be had here. <laughs> and it was, it was a really cool feeling because I was able to... I was able to control the forces 
but I was right on the edge. It's like, oh my gosh, like there's no more movement I could do here. And I'm using all of my strength at the end of my range of motion. And so it just felt very on edge. And I think that that's kind of what we're all after here. So, you know, if you're listening to this going like, okay, what do I do with this? Okay, well, first of all, you know, inspire yourself a little bit to visualize and think about, okay, all the awesome things you could do if you apply the, these principles, if you can challenge the core, if you can destabilize the core in a safe place off the bike. That's the main thing that I'm taking away from this. And I think the main thing that people in the program are just like, yeah, I mean, I did it off the bike and it felt so much more natural on the bike, which is back to the point of mountain biking. It's not a natural human movement. You're right. And so, so a real good question for you, if you're listening is what if I could make this unnatural movement feel natural or make it as natural as possible? What John's talking about is the path to do that. So I like it, man. I agree. Good stuff. We rarely disagree because I'm not the expert in mobility and functional strength. I'm not the bike expert either, so that's why we work together. <laughs> well, cool, man. So, um, so yeah, let's talk a little bit more about um, one more thing I wanted to bring some attention to. And there's a there's a group of people that have maybe never they think of the core as like the sit up muscle. It's like I need to tighten my ab muscle down, and and that's totally fine. And then there's people that are at least aware that essentially the core is anything attached to the trunk, right? So could you kind of give give a brief overview of, you know, maybe what does it feel like to have an activated core when you're sitting down? Or what does it feel like to support your torso with your core either while doing a sport or while doing a move we're all very used to? You got anything for that? Uh, well, it's different based on any situation for sure. Um... I think in general, anytime you're doing a movement, especially in the gym, the gym, it's a safe environment. You can be over aware of things in a good way. You can, you know, if you're doing some sort of plank variation, you can be, you know, you can tell yourself, hey, David, all right, let's tense up, make sure we tense up our obliques since we know this variation is going to challenge it. Let's engage the muscles to 100%, even though we don't need that level of engagement. Um, you know, the, the gym is where you create the muscle memory for the core to be on during dynamic movement or movement where you're resisting rotation. That's where you, you know, you overemphasize it in the gym because, I mean, when you're out biking, you know, you're not going to be like, oh, I'm about to hit this corner. Let me make sure and tense up my, I'm turning left. Let me make sure and engage my left obliques here and get, you don't have enough time to do that. But, I mean, the gym is a slow, safe pace. Okay? place and you know you challenge it you challenge it with movements um you know your brain doesn't know knows the difference you're you're biking fast and holding a still plank it knows there's a difference there but it still knows hey this is work and the last time we did something similar to this you know he was really telling me hey turn on that left side let's say you're doing a plank variation where you remove a hand and your left side has to get tight um, you know, he was really being intentional about engaging that side. This turn feels similar. Maybe we should get tight there. Um, you know, so that if you worry about core strength at all in the gym, be crazy intentional with it. Um, and in daily life, you could be intentional with it as well. If you feel like, you know, you sit way too much and you have really crappy posture, you know, be intentional with sitting upright, getting as, as tall of a spine as possible, but from there, tensing your abs hard without crunching forward, just keeping a vertical spine. Um, you know, throughout the day, just turn turn it on. Turn on your right side of obliques. Turn on your left side of obliques. Turn on your abs. Do, do a subtle back extension to turn on your spinal erectors. Um, you know, when you pick stuff up, turn it. When you're taking groceries to and from the car, turn on your abs. Turn on... You know, you can kind of, when you're carrying it, you can kind of feel where stuff that acts on the trunk wants to turn on and is turning on. Just overemphasize those things if you want to really, you know, just kind of boost how much your brain is aware of turning those things on during activity. Yeah, that's all. It, my biggest takeaway from that is if you can practice it and intentionally practice it slowly in the gym, 
you build the muscle memory that you can later use automatically on trail. I love that. So, yeah, it's just it's body mind connection. It reinforce that body mind connection. Cool. Gotcha, man. Any other thoughts you want to share? Or are you feeling good with that? I'm feeling pretty good with that. Yeah, I mean the core the core is super important, and I, I will say this: the more you know, I've been getting into a good bit of more, much more road cycling than I was a year ago, and that's even led me into gravel cycling now. And it's you honestly can't do enough core training. Like having a day where you do just a quick five to ten minute routine doesn't have to be exhausting to the core at all, but it can as long as it's very intentional, where you are you know just doing some plank variations. Maybe doing some banded holds, stuff like that, but you're really just intentional about turning on the midsection. It's, if you ride for long periods of time, I think you can't do enough core work. Good point, man. Can't do enough core work if you ride for long periods of time. For all those lucky ducks out there that get to ride their bike more than, you know, 30 minutes or an hour, once, twice a week, you know, some of us. Yeah, are, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's good no, it's good. I do long rides too. Um, there's there's a lot of folks that don't do it as much, but um, yeah, it's really good stuff. Appreciate it, man. Well, thanks so much. I know some of you right now are thinking, okay, well, how can I do this? It's very simple. Take some time to take action on what you see in the channel. The people that are stuck around thinking that they can't do anything about it, the ones that are like, hey, riding, it's important to me, but you're kind of caught up in the whirlwind of life. Look, it's just because no one showed you how to get progress. Make the decision right now to go out there and do one thing today to strengthen your core. Build that commitment. This is self-development. When we have self-development, we have command and control of our bodies. And when you can do anything with your body, you can do anything on the bike. And mountain biking is important enough to dedicate time and energy and effort to becoming great at it, especially if you're going to ride for the rest of your life. So make the change today. Get out there. Do something about it. I know I am. I'm going to go do some planks right now, and I'll see you on the next episode. Thanks.